So this is just a brief overview of how political conflict will arise from a shift in the ecosystem. And I think the ultimate research question that I would pose is how do we best design effective rule sets, effective institutions to manage um, these conflicts so that multiple users can continue to function in the area formerly covered or intermittently covered by sea ice. So it's not actually my definition, it comes from uh, Edwards and Lapucci, 1998 uh, would be the citation and uh, doctors Edwards and Lapucci developed a different definition and that is that politics is struggles over claims to authority to decide what is, what is right, and what works. So an illustrative example of this with um, our current sea ice uh, would be that we know sea ice provides a platform for uh, polar bears to den, uh, to hunt, uh, and to raise their young. Um, so if we have to think about the problem of polar bear reduction through diminishing sea ice, um, this is inherently a political question, right? What will government do or not do to maintain this species? So uh, first, who has authority to make the decision related to polar bears? This would be um, the US Congress having the authority to potentially list the bears within the institution that is the Endangered Species Act, right? A bundle of rules applied to different species. Um, the next piece of this would be um, uh, what is, right? So we have to determine scientifically, right, bear population as well as people's uses of these polar bears. What is right is another concern, though. Is it right to uh, list the polar bears uh, and then thus restrict the trade in polar bear skins as well as uh, potentially restrict activities on ice? Um, or is that not right? People are going to debate over that, certainly, different stakeholders. And then what works? It may uh, not work actually to save the polar bear to list it under the Endangered Species Act. It may be better to open uh, the polar bear in Alaska to sport hunting, which would uh, increase the value of the bear to people uh, as well as um, potentially um, keep the bear more viable. But what works may not uh, line up with what people believe is right about protecting that bear. Um, and for all we know, the what is um, it may be that the bears will diminish and die out, starve out, um, regardless of what we do. So that's sort of an illustration of politics at work. A uh, social ecological system uh, is um, when we think about how uh, the human component uh, of the world and the uh, ecological uh, component of the world uh, interrelate with one another. So if you picture like a Venn diagram, uh, your circle that you think of as being social and the circle that you think of being as the natural world, uh, when these start to interface with one another, that shared slice um, represents uh, what we think of as an interactive subsystem. Um, so in general, however, we're all always continually bound uh, in a social ecological system because we receive our uh, food, our water, our air from uh, the ecosystems we inhabit. So when we think about uh, diminishing sea ice, we have to recognize a few things. One is that um, we've passed a threshold and sea ice is only going to continue to diminish. Um, so if we shut down carbon production, uh, changed our behavior, we wouldn't be gaining more sea ice. Um, a second feature of that is that not only is sea ice um, directionally diminishing, but it's uh, more unpredictable from year to year. So the combination of these factors is going to affect uh, people and ecosystems, so social ecological systems, differently on different scales. So you would have the effects in Barrow at the highly localized scale of hunters and other individuals who go out on the ice needing uh, highly accurate information from day to day, year to year about the sea ice so that they can plan not only their daily activities but their seasonal whale hunting activities. That would be a highly local scale. And uh, politics that would derive from that would be uh, preference choices by the people living in Barrow transmitted to their uh, city, borough governments, their regional uh, corporations, up through their representatives, senators, and the general political system. As well as because of uh, Barrow's involvement in whaling, this would also have an international dimension being transmitted uh, to the International Whaling Commission. 
So uh, that gives us an idea of how a highly local area might feed up its political preferences that could result in policy on the, from the local to the international scale. Well, there's not a problem depending on who you are, right? For oil and gas, diminishing sea ice poses a, a very small problem. Um, on the other hand, if you're someone who cares about uh, polar bears surviving on the landscape and not in zoos, diminishing an unpredictable sea ice poses a very large problem. But if we think about it from a political point of view, as sea ice diminishes over time, it's going to create new conditions that will bring stakeholders previously not in contact with one another into political conflict. How can we capitalize on the opportunities and minimize the destructive aspect of human externalities produced by using these new ice-free areas?